the first flights to Mars are about to take place. For the first time, humans will land on another planet. This moment will be a moving step in the history of our species. And we all dream of being able to experience the day when a human being sets foot on the red planet for the first time. But have you ever wondered what this journey to Mars would really look like in practice? What challenges and dangers await the first Mars astronauts? Follow us now on this first journey to Mars. Mars, a destination and a challenge for mankind. The idea that Mars could be inhabited or once visited by humans has existed for more than a century. When the Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli discovered Earth-like structures on the surface of Mars in 1877, humans began to dream of this neighboring world. Mars is indeed our closest and the most Earth-like planetary neighbor. Only it provides a surface on which humans can land and survive for a period of time. Nevertheless, its gravity and thin atmosphere are a challenge that no one knows for sure today how long a human can withstand. It will be difficult to survive there, but it's not impossible. To best prepare humans for this step, NASA is initially planning a permanent settlement on the moon. Only a few hundred thousand kilometers from Earth, astronauts are to rehearse life in space. The moon also offers very different gravity conditions, no protective atmosphere, and an environment that takes some getting used to for humans. Instead of a blue sky, trees, greenery, familiar urban structures and sounds, space colonists will have to make do with wasteland, the absence of watercourses, birdsong, and the usual day and night times. All of this can be far more challenging for the organism and the psyche than most of us can imagine. Another aspect that can affect space settlers is the fact that they are alone in space in an environment that is actually not conducive to human life. On the Moon and Mars, people won't be able to move for a moment without protective, thick space suits and an artificial oxygen supply. Simply going for a walk is no more possible than a casual game of soccer or an outdoor barbecue. Lunar and Martian settlers will have to relocate their usual activities to specially protected living and working areas. In the process, people will initially have to live close together and share all major utility units. In addition to the constant threat from outside, experts fear that there could be a kind of space madness due to lack of space and cramped conditions. It's already clear that the first humans to fly to the moon and Mars for extended periods of time will be hardcore professionals who are now going through years of preparation. In addition to the physical requirements, the possible candidates must have a healthy psyche and an iron will. Even if these conditions are met, the flights still remain and they too will be another hurdle to overcome. To the moon and on to Mars in just three days. The Artemis missions will focus on first establishing humans on the moon. In practical terms, that means harnessing on-site resources, finding water and oxygen, and testing existing building materials such as rocks and metals. At the same time, NASA and its partners will build the Lunar Gateway Space Station, a space station that in a distant future will be an outpost to Earth and a gateway to space. With one unit in orbit around the Moon and one on the surface, up to 100 people will have a permanent presence around the Moon to live, work, conduct research, and receive and care for spacefaring colleagues. The humans on the moon will be supported by numerous rovers that will pick up work and serve as scientific research facilities. Already in the next years, the large-scale sending of material and flight machines on the moon is planned. If these flights work out, the development of the Mars route is to start at the same time. NASA already has extensive experience about the best flight routes, optimal acceleration maneuvers, flight times, fuel calculations, and more due to the dispatch of numerous rovers to Mars. Spacecraft capable of carrying heavy equipment and humans to Mars present yet another task. But at NASA, engineers and scientists are optimistic that humanity will be ready to make the move to an interplanetary species in a few years. Who will land first, NASA or SpaceX? It's an exciting race to see who will put a human on Mars first. The U.S. government's space agency, NASA, or private space pioneer Elon Musk with SpaceX. Experts are betting on SpaceX. 
Elon Musk has simply shown more assertiveness and innovative spirit in the space sector over the past 20 years, and it's rumored in expert circles that NASA also dug out old plans to return to the moon from its drawers, only because the U.S. entrepreneur Musk went ahead. With SpaceX and NASA already working together successfully now, a joint project or close collaboration between the two is most likely. NASA has undoubtedly been ahead of the curve when it comes to Mars exploration with orbiters, rovers, and more recently, the first human-built spacecraft, the small Ingenuity helicopter, landing on Mars. Although nations like Japan, China, India, and even the Arab Emirates are also sending probes to Mars, NASA is still leading the way, and everything we know about the Red Planet so far is thanks to NASA. While Musk is already planning to build a permanent human settlement and research facility on the surface of Mars, NASA has a plan to build an autonomous space station in Mars orbit for now. In a much more distant future, there could be a network of space stations orbiting other planets or even moons throughout the solar system. In these stations, humans would then explore celestial bodies at close range. NASA's Moon to Mars Plan NASA clearly says, We first establish our footprint on the moon, learn how to survive and build in the harsh environment of a lifeless world, and then send first humans to Mars. Before humans even arrive on Mars for the first time, there will be one or more resupply missions to ensure that everything the astronauts need to survive and return home is already in place. In practical terms, this means that the Artemis 10 mission will first approach the moon and then deliver a payload called Mars Cargo Stage 1 into orbit around the moon. Artemis 11 will deliver Mars Cargo Stage 2 into space. The cargo pieces sent ahead will arrive with a 25-ton Mars lander that contains propellant for the return launch, a power source for the crew, and mobility unit. The heavy equipment that will first land on Mars also includes an ascent vehicle that will be used to shuttle humans between the surface and the Mars Gateway in space. A transit habitat vehicle will serve as living quarters and a means of transportation. Strictly speaking, the astronaut's landing capsule on Mars will be converted into a rover and living quarters. Inside the spacious vehicle, the first two Mars astronauts will live and work for about 30 days, then return. Including flight time, these two Mars astronauts will have spent several months in weightlessness because doctors and scientists currently know too little about the long-term effects of space travel and stays on Mars. People are initially expected to stay there for a limited period of time. In the past, astronauts on the ISS have repeatedly experienced problems with disorientation and eye problems, despite strict precautions. In order not to lose muscle mass and strengthen bones in weightlessness, the space travelers have to follow strict sports programs. The situation on Mars and the Moon is again quite different from that in space. Both celestial bodies do not offer the same gravitational pull as the Earth, but neither are they completely without gravity, as is the case in free space. Mars Landing – Harder Than Expected Mars has a very thin atmosphere, but it's still necessary to protect space capsules and material supplies with a heat shield. NASA safely wrapped its latest rover, Perseverance, and brought it to Mars suspended on parachutes. After breaking through the upper atmosphere, Perseverance touched down on the surface in a multi-step descent process. Gas jets made the final fine adjustments. It was truly a feat to safely set down the multi-million dollar vehicle weighing tons on Mars, but the endeavor was a success. Whatever NASA's plans to land the manned spacecraft on Mars, it will be an exciting moment in human history after a journey of more than 200 days, the first two humans will set their feet on Mars and drive around on the surface. It will be an uplifting feeling, and surely millions of people on Earth will watch this event with excitement. After the first 30 days, the humans will set off again, and a 403-day return flight then awaits them. Lonely in the darkness of space and weightlessness, the astronauts will have to endure a total of 650 days, or almost two years, under unusual conditions. A follow-up mission will take advantage of another favorable window in the constellation between Mars and Earth and send humans to Mars in a mission shortened by 200 days. Direct flights to Mars still pose a challenge. Some of the routes provide for acceleration maneuvers at Venus, while others may cover the distance more directly. For now, 
humanity still lacks technology that has propulsion systems that will help make the trip to Mars and back much faster and easier. NASA is working with the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency on a next-generation spacecraft. The demonstration rocket of Agile Cislunar Operations, or DRACO for short, is expected to offer about three to five times greater efficiency thanks to a nuclear thermal rocket motor. In practice, this could reduce the transit time for a manned Mars mission from up to eight months to just 45 days. The risk posed by radiation in space and the emotional toll on the first Mars pioneers could thus be significantly reduced. Draco is expected to be operational in less than five years. This means that nuclear propulsion will most likely be available by the time the first humans actually leave for Mars. The landing of the Mars camper with the first astronauts is planned in a time window of about 10 years. We're already looking forward to sharing these unique events with you in the not too distant future. At the end of the video, tell us what you think about these space missions and whether you would also like to fly to Mars.